All right, so I did a couple different designs for this, uh, for my logo. Um, I tried doing chamfer, and I tried doing engrave, and I tried doing trace. Um, I need to just make, redraw it where it's not like the border, so it's just a traceable line. Um, but I'm thinking engrave is gonna be my best bet. Uh, it'll go down and it'll cut all these corners nice and sharp. Uh, trace, it traced the outline and it kind of looks cool. Um, but I think engrave is going to look better. So I'm going to do a couple test cuts on this, uh, on the jig that we made yesterday. Um, I'm just going to try to machine it here and here and just see what it looks like and try to get my depths figured out. Right now, I think it's like 15th out deep. Um, on this drawing, but I think it'll look kind of cool. So yeah, I'm gonna load up a file and try to try to machine it on this guy All right, I think I got everything set up. I have the right tool selected. Anyways, this is the 60 degree. It's just a one flute little eighth inch bit um, And it should I tried to combine all the code together in uh, VS studio or whatever it's called um, so hopefully it runs the first test and then has a stop and I can do the second test and then a stop and I can change the tool and try the 90 degree. Um, so I guess we'll find out. I'll just keep my, keep my hand near the, uh, E stop and let's see, I think, I think we're good to go. It did the logo and now it's just writing engraved 60 degree 10 thou deep or whatever I told it to write. And now it's starting the second program, so it did just jump right to the second one, which is fine because they have the same tool. So I'm hoping it stops before the tool changes. stop at the M5 G30 and then M30 so I'm not sure what of those is what I gotta try to I gotta do better at memorizing those things so we'll for a 90 degree chamfer mill which is somewhere yeah it stopped the program so I'll be able to just start it once I get the new tool in. Well, shoot, I can't get it to start. So I just copy and pasted the second program. And I don't know why, but G30, I think is go home. And then M0 is a uh, like stop program, I believe. Or yeah, something like that, maybe pause. But no matter what I do, like if I click here, I set start line here. Cycle start, it doesn't do anything. If I do start line here with linear, doesn't do anything. With Z plunge, doesn't do anything. No preparation, start, nothing. Um, if anybody knows how to start it in the middle, like Mach 4, I can click anywhere and just say start, start here but I want this to know what tool I have in it and spindle speed, I wanna be able to do it the right way. Um, so yeah, if anybody knows how to do that with PathPilot, let me know. So I'm kind of thinking because M30 is in here, that means end the program. 
and when you apparently start from anywhere in the code, it still reads everything above to make sure everything's going right. So I'm wondering if I can just delete this. Does not look like it. Um, and if I do delete it, it should still go down to G90 and it'll run all this stuff and let me do a tool change with a pause right there. So I just need to get rid of the M30, I believe. Okay, I may have found a way. So if you go back to file, open up the, uh, the program. Um, oh shoot, file and then edit. And then I think I can edit it. So it's around 18 something. There's my M30. Yeah, okay. And then can I save it? And close it, file changed on disk, reload, okay. Yeah, it's gone. Okay, now I'm going to, let's see. I wanna see if I can just start it right here. Um, and then cycle start, insert tool 13. I don't want tool 13. I want tool 12. Maybe I started it too high up. Cycle start again. Oh, it, it changed my tool automatically for me. Cycle start, oh, now it went to the top of the program. So I still have something in there that's messing it up. Um, so what if I just start it right here? Gotta hit stop. And then set start line here. I don't know what the with Z plunge or with linear or any of that stuff is. Cycle start. Nah, still doesn't want to do it. Well, I'm too dumb to figure it out. I, I have no idea why it won't let me start the program down there, but something up above it is stopping it, I believe. So I, um, yeah, I just resaved the program, the two programs separately. Fusion will let you output uh, multiple programs at once, but they have to be the same tool and they have to be uh, next to each other. All right, so we're gonna fire this one up. Um, I have the correct tool selected. And there she goes. Sweet. It's just supposed to be kind of an MW and kind of mountain shaped, you know. Um, I don't know. I came up with it on my own. I think that one looks the best, though. Uh, we'll pull it out and take a look. See. All right. So here's what we got. These are the two engraved. This one just kind of ended up just removing basically everything inside of it. So 90 degree engrave, 90 degree trace, and then 60 degree engrave, 60 degree trace. So I think both of these look pretty good. Um, let's see. I think I like this one because it has sharper corners. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the 60 degree, 10 thou, depth engrave. That looks pretty sweet. Yeah, that's the winner. 
All right, I got the first step program is just facing, so I'm just gonna put you on time lapse and we're just gonna run through all the programs and hopefully nothing goes bad. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I think I went a little bit too fast for the uh, 62,000 mil. Snapped it off, I'm cutting out. So this is where the spring's gonna go and it's got the leg that comes out. So it's that little slot that I'm trying to cut. And yeah, I just went a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna throw a new end mill in and remeasure it, give her another go. All right, got her out. So I ended up, I was supposed to do four and a half by one by half. And I ended up, I just had a five inch long, so I did five inch and thought it'd be fine. But it turned out it plunged right in, right over here, I think, just plunged right in and then started going and it was way too big of a cut because um, it was full depth and I don't know, 200 thou deep. Um, and then it also left these little tabs on the corners. So I'm gonna have to lop those tabs off. And the plan is, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a lip there, lower, higher. And the plan is for it to fit right into that slot. And then it'll be bolted through here into there or there. So I got to tap these for M3. Um, and then it'll bolt in like that, and then I can um, machine the backside. And I think it's gonna look kind of cool. I ended up doing a spiral flute or spiral, I think that's what it's called, Pat, program. Um, and it's gonna leave a little bit of a cusp all the way around, so should look pretty cool. I'm gonna cut these edges off and see if we can get it bolted in. I just have to put a M3 thread in these two holes. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, so I got it in there. It's pretty tight fit, but it did slip in. And to kind of get it lined up just right, which is surprising, because I didn't machine really any clearance. I just did one-to-one, -one, so it's, uh, it's a nice tight fit. And uh, so it's resting inside of this slot, but on this side. Um, and then I'll put two screws in through the back side to pull it down and hold it. And then uh, I can touch off, or I set the programs up to touch off to the uh, jig corner. Um, and then same with the height, the height will touch off of the jig. So, yep, I'm just gonna get it in here and then we'll throw her in and machine the back side and see how the spiral uh, program works. Yeah. 
the cabin board to the hole. But I should have done my step over a little bit bigger because I wanted to see the, the uh, machining marks. But my step over is a little too small, so it's a little too smooth. I think it's a little too smooth. It could have been, I wanted it to be a little bit rougher. Um, but it's still, still way cool looking. Um, I just wanted the uh, step over and the, the ridges to be just a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, I think uh, obviously if I'm wanting to make these like over and over, I would machine it out of a bigger stock and do both sides at the same time. Uh, that's how I designed it all, so that I would be able to do that, um, which would cut the machining time down by probably half. I can also speed up a lot, but I also have to slow down a lot. So some of those contouring, I need to slow. I need to slow those down. But this one, the spiral, I was running at 150% the whole time, and it could go. It, it needs to just be set to go faster. So I had it set at 40 inches per minute, and I was running at 150%, which is 60 inches per minute. So I could probably turn that all the way up to like 70, and then I have some, some room to play. I could crank it up or, or slow it down. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty happy with this. this. This is gorgeous. It's gonna make a way cool looking knife. So plopped her on out. So here's my bolts underneath. They seem to do the job just fine. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, might use the bolts to try to like tap it out. Um, let's see. Yeah, she's going. That's gonna be a badass looking knife. So this is the back side. The pocket clip will go up here, and then the spring will drop in there. And then there's a stop hole for an eighth inch dowel right there. And then the button will be on this side, so it'll go in your pocket like this. You'll be able to reach in with your thumb in your pocket and pull it out and push the button. But yeah, that finish is sweet on here. There we go. Gorgeous. Wish there was a way around these screws. My last knife, I did just one screw at the bottom and then the pivot screw. Um, and it, they work fine. It's just you have to be really careful tightening the pivot screw, otherwise it's too tight. And I do hard anodize them, so I don't run any sort of bushing or anything in here but I may with this one. There's no way to do a bushing or a bearing on this side, but I may do one on the other side. This side has the spring that's in the way. Um, the other option would be to do like a roller bearing on the actual um, pivot pin, but my other knives are smooth as glass, so not too worried about it. Super happy with the surface finish, though that is yeah, this is the machine marks I was kind of talking about. Focus, you mother effer. So those cusps could have been a little bigger. That would also speed up the program quite a bit. But it does, it does look pretty awesome how it is. Just, you can barely feel those. But you can see them, so that's kind of cool. The anodize will make that stand out a little bit more. Um, and then when I make them out of titanium, it'll be the same thing. Those will be anodized also. But let me grab some bolts and see how they look in these holes. I was kind of worried about that. I put them as far in as I could. Um, but they have to be right on this edge. Um, so I just made them even. And you want them as far back as you can to hold the back closed. So that when you tighten the pivot, it doesn't suck it together as much. Um, but there's also this pin that holds it. 
Um, you just can't really, you just can't crank down on the pivot, on any knife really. Um, but yeah, let me grab some screws. So there's a little bit of a burr built up in there. But I did size these holes. I'm gonna have to machine the, the uh, ridges on these screws down so they'll be smooth. And then I'm gonna machine the top so it's also nice and smooth. Um, and they'll drop in and they'll, they'll at least look like they're a uh, handmade screw, at least hand finished. Um, but I also, yeah, they, they fit just right. No play at all. Um, I just need to get those grooves machined off. All right, so there they are. They are perfectly at height. And they actually look pretty good. So I got the head centered up with the, uh, the actual screw. So they spin in there perfectly. Otherwise, sometimes the head will be off center from the screw. So yeah, I haven't decided if I want to chamfer the screw or if it's okay to be kind of hanging over the edge like that. If I chamfer it, then there's a gap inside of there. I think it, it looks pretty good just like that. I'm gonna call it. Get the other side going, get the blade going. Um, here's those screw holes that held it down. And after that, they don't do anything, so yeah. Wish I could get this surface finish a little better. I couldn't find a good tool path to cut out this pocket. For some reason, no tool paths freaking work right. I had to do all sorts of stupid stuff just to make it work. Um, Cause yeah, it's not a great finish. You saw how many times I had to lift and plunge and lift and plunge, it was just stupid. There's no, I couldn't figure out how to get it to just machine. So if anybody has any recommendations on that, that would be super helpful too. But yep, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Um, I'll probably just make the other handle and then we'll, I'll, I'll do another video when I'm working on the blade. Cause that'll be steel, that'll be hardening, all that fun stuff. So yep, see you later.